Greetings, my name is Kerry and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a TBR for you. It's kind of a November TBR but it's not strictly limited to November. It's books I want to read before the end of the year mainly. There is also another readathon thrown in so I'm really getting into my readathons in the moment. A bit more on that later. But yeah, so this is sort of the in the books I intend to read before the end of the year. A few things that I'm trying to finish off, challenges I'm trying to finish off before the end of the year. I will say though, I will be making another TBR around the beginning of December because now is as good a time to any to announce that the Christmas Readathon is going to be coming back this year. I'll be hosting it again. I've already got most of the challenges I think worked out. There is going to be a theme to it as well this year which I'm very excited about. Keep a look out for that, for announcement video for that coming in the next couple of weeks of how you can get involved in the Christmas Readathon this year. It's a very low-key readathon that I started up last year because I just wanted to have a focus for kind of Christmassy reading and sort of a chance to try and clear some of the TBR before the end of the year. All the details of that will be coming soon on this channel but for now these are some of the books not including books I'll be reading for that that I'm intending to read by the end of the year. I'm going to start with our Ninja Book Club pick for November. So this is a book that I've actually had for a little while because I have a subscription to the publisher and I just haven't got around to reading it yet so I'm really excited to be picking up this month for book club and that is Please Read This Leaflet Carefully by Karen Havilland. This is published by Dead Ink Books. So I own a number of books published by Dead Ink and I haven't actually read any of them yet. So this will be the first one. I'm really looking forward to it. It's about a woman's struggle with endometriosis. It's a condition that affects a lot of women and not very much is known about it publicly. I think it's sort of often dismissed or it's, it's not very well understood in the general public. I, n I have a couple of friends that suffer from it. Yeah, looking forward to reading that. And I think, I believe the author is from Norway as well, so it will be another book for my read around the world, which kind of put on the back burner a little bit this year. So I have made progress with it, but it will be good to tick off another country for that. And the next book that I'll be trying to read is my next book, Death Row book, which I picked Remembrance by Teresa Breslin. This, I think, is middle grade, so hopefully it won't take me too long and I'll be able to clear maybe another book, Death Row book, this month as well. I think it should be quite an easy read in terms of, like, complexity. It is about the First World War, so it might be quite difficult in some ways in terms of the subject matter. But it's an era that I do find fascinating, particularly how it affects the lives of daily people. So I'm looking forward to reading this. Then a couple of read-alongs that started last month that are carrying on. So I read The Bone Season last month. I've got The Mime Order to pick up this month for Bonathon. Really loved The Bone Season. So really looking forward to carrying on this series. I wasn't going to buy them, but I loved the first one so much that I thought I'd buy the second one. And if I enjoy it, I will buy the third one and then probably pre-order the, the next one, which is coming out sometime early part of next year. I've just really fallen in love with Samantha Shannon's writing as well. So I'm really keen to carry on with this series. And then the other read along that I'm meant to be taking part in, been a bit lax, is The Hob Along. So I haven't actually got round to reading Assassin's Apprentice yet so this is probably next on my list to read this month this is probably the one i'm going to be trying to get to first because i have now bought royal assassin which is the next in this series in anticipation of enjoying this series so i better like it <laughs> carry on with that and then one more series that i'm hoping to continue with this month because again i may have bought the rest of the series is the witchlands so this is wind witch the second book in the witchland series i have got this one out from the library but i have now bought blood witch because I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to get it from the library easily. And Sight Witch, which is, a, I think, a prequel, but again, my local library doesn't have that one. So because I've now bought them, I really need to carry on with this series. And I really love the writing. Again, I love Susan Dennard's writing, so I'm really keen to carry on with this series. So those are the slightly rounded ones. Now, I have three series that I'm desperate to finish this year. You may recognise them because I think they've popped up in TBRs quite a lot to be honest. Three series that I really, really want to tick off and complete this year. First is the Days of Blood and, no, what's the first one called? Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. So I've just got the, the final part, Dreams of Gods and Monsters, to finish. This is quite a chunky book. I think this is actually the longest in the series, but I've been really enjoying the series. Again, I really love Lainey Taylor's writing, so really keen to try and get through this one by the end of the year. 
One of the oldest books on my TBR is a sequel, this is The Embers of Heaven, which is a sequel to The Secrets of Jin Shea, which I read many years ago and reread this year in anticipation of reading this one to try and finish off this series and clear it from my TBR. And I still haven't got around to it, so desperate to try and finish fit this book in by the end of the year, finish off this series. It's only, I mean, it's only a duology, it should be easy to do, but never mind. The first book in this series is about a secret sisterhood in a sort of a uh, culture vaguely resembling I want to say Japan, but it may have been China. That was really bad that I can't remember. But that sort of Far Eastern kind of culture, but mixed in with a lot of magical realism. It's about this sisterhood, how these women have to like make a promise to support each other and encourage each other, and all of what that leads to. So the sequel is set a couple of hundred years later, I think, and it's about how, whether that culture, that secret society, secret sisterhood has survived. I actually had bought this one before I bought The Secrets of Jin Shea because I didn't realise it was essentially a sequel so been needing to read this one for a really long time so I'm going to try and push that one off. And then finally another series I'm really desperate to finish is The Illuminae Files. This is Obsidia the third one. This is a uh, YA sci-fi series told in mixed media format. Really engaging, really interesting to read. I really need to finish this one as well because my dad has been borrowing them from me and he really wants to finish the series and I said he can't until I have. So I need to finish this one so that he can finish it. Even though the, these books are quite long, this one is over 600 pages. Because it's told in mixed media format, they are quite an easy read. So hopefully we'll be able to read this one quite quickly and finish it off. Now, the other challenge that I've had ongoing for this year is the Indie Challenge hosted by Ninja Book Box. I've been working my way through the bingo card. I have ticked off most of the squares at least once. And I've got the bingo card here somewhere I actually can show you. So there, that's my bingo card. And I've just got two squares that I haven't ticked off at all. And then I've got some squares that I've only ticked off once or twice. And I'm aiming to read 25 books at least from it. I'm on course to read that. I think I've read 22 books for that. So I definitely will have achieved reading 25 independently published books by the end of the year. It's just whether I've hit all of those challenges with a unique book or not. So I set up a spreadsheet for myself yesterday to try and help myself achieve that. If I can, I'll put in a screenshot up here to show you. So, so far I've got two squares that I haven't ticked off at all and I've got some that I don't have a unique book for. So hopefully if I manage to read these next four books I'm going to tell you about, it will clear all of those up so that I have read a unique book for every square. That's the plan anyway, I'm not entirely sure if it will work, but I do have a couple of other independently published books that are ongoing. I've got a couple of non-fiction ones I'm in the middle of, and obviously I've got the Ninja Book Club books as well, and some of these other ones are surprising by independent publishers, so they will help as well. So the two squares I've got left to tick off are a micro press and established 2018. So established 2018 is for brand new presses that were either founded or released their first book in 2018. So for that I've got two options and we've got On Anxiety an Anthology by Three of Cups Press. This is a collection of essays I think and short stories, poetry, all that sort of thing about the theme of anxiety. So Three of Cups Press actually was set up in 2017 but this was their first book which they published which came out in 2018. This will also tick off a couple of other squares, it's an anthology which is one that I'm lacking in and I think it ticks off a few other things as well but I can't remember off the top of my head what they are. So, oh it's a debut because it's the first book by this publisher so that is gonna be really helpful if I can get on that. I might actually start on that today because it's quite it's quite short as well and hopefully sort of bite size reading chunks from that one. And then the other one that I can use for that square is This Is Disturbing the Beast by Boudicca Press. So Boudicca Press was set up in 2018 and they launched a Kickstarter to publish this book and then the book was actually published in 2019 but the the company itself was set up in 2018. So this is a collection of short stories. This is also a women's press, so it works for that. It also works for an anthology. Both of these books as well were crowdfunded, so that's another square on the board as well. So both of these books will cover a lot of challenges for the indie challenge. It's a year-long challenge, so I've been I've been doing really well, I think. It's really helped me to focus on indie reading, and I'd say about a third of my reading this year has been from independent publishers, which is pretty good, really. And then the other square I've got to tick off is still is a micro press. So this is a publishing company run basically by one person as a hobby, as a side business. So the two books I picked for this are slightly, well, they're loosely an interpretation of that. They're both by 
independent authors who are self-published, but as part of their self-publishing, they've set up their own publishing company to publish their work specifically. So the first one of these is one of more confidently fits into that category, I believe, and this is Song of the o Overworld by Dawn E. James. So I actually met Dawn James this summer. I went on a little conference with a charity I used to work for and she works for the charity now and so I met her and she signed the book for me and it sounds really interesting it's about music having magical properties and about a couple of people who are fighting against the the bad guy who wants to eliminate music so it's sort of again quite magical realism quite fantastical but set in sort of a fairly normal setting if that makes any sense really excited to read this so she has a publishing company called Bridgehead which I think it's actually her husband does the publishing side of it and she does the writing side but this is her first book as well so this also covers a debut and yeah really keen to read that it was also published in 2018 actually so it could also work for established 2018 and a debut so again covering quite a lot of categories for that one and then the last one which I'm going to try and read for that category is the Stolen Kingdom by Bethany Atazada. So she set up a publishing company called Grace House Press, which she uses to publish all of her books. This is the first in a new series from her. I've not actually read any of her books yet, but I follow her authortube channel and I really love her video making style. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna love her books too. I've been meaning to get them for ages. And this is a new series she's just started, which is fairy tale retelling. So this first one I think is based on Aladdin. I'm not entirely sure. Um, and the next one is coming out in the next couple of months I think as well so quite keen to get on and read this series too. So those are all the ones to finish off the indie challenge. I've done the series so the last thing to talk about is the other readathon that is going on in November that I'm taking part in which is the second round of Voltathon which is hosted by Margaret from The Word Nerd. I will link her announcement video down in the description for you. Voltathon is based on underappreciated Disney films and this round it is Treasure Planet which is not a Disney film I've seen but I do have the DVD so I will be watching it. There'll be a watch along at some point during the readathon. I haven't actually written down the date for that but it's not in the same time zone as me so I'll probably watch it the night before rather than staying up to watch it at the same time. I'm not entirely sure yet how it fits with the time zones. So there are six challenges and there's also again a group book which meets all the challenges so I'll go through the challenges first and then I'll go through the books that I'm hoping to try and read for it. May just stick to the group book again this time like I did the last time but I have a couple of others that I could fit into some of the challenges as well. The first challenge is Space Pirates which is a reimagined classic or a, a book which reimagines a classic I should say. The second one is Treasure Planet which is a book with stars on the cover. The third is Old Fashioned Romance, which is a book that can that features a romance. The fourth is Centroid of the Mechanism, which is a book with a twist. The fifth is I'm Still Here, which is read a book while listening to music. And the sixth is The Benbo Inn, uh, which is to read in a place that serves food. I should say as well, the dates for the readathon are the 18th to the 24th of November. So the group book is Brightly Burning by Alexa Don. I treated myself to this again because I couldn't get it easily from the library, but I did buy a second hand. And I bought it because I was fairly confident that I'd enjoy it because it's a retelling of Jane Eyre but set in space, which sounds fantastic to me. This meets all the challenges, or at least all the book related challenges. And if I listen to music in a place that serves food while I'm reading it, then I'll tick off all the challenges with this one book. So I could complete this readathon just from reading this one book. But I have two others that I'm going to try and fit in as well. I don't know if I'll manage it. But some of these other books that I've mentioned will probably tick off some of the challenges too. So we'll see how we go with that. But two books that I want to try and read before the end of the year, which I can make fit into challenges for this. We've got Red Shirts by John Scalzi. This I'm actually borrowing from my dad. I got my dad this for his birthday and he loved it and lent it straight back to me. And I've been meaning to read it for ages anyway because I'd had it out from the library before then. I'm using this for Reimagine a, a Classic because it is based on Star Trek. I know it's meant to be a classic book, but uh, never mind. Um, so, but I thought it would fit that category because it's, I mean, it's about science fiction, which kind of fits. So it's based on the idea that in the original series of Star Trek, the guys wearing the red shirts would always die on the away missions and it's an, a crew member trying to uncover the conspiracy that's making this up and my dad says it's brilliant. Based on Star Trek, which I love as well, I'm hoping, well I think it's probably got a bit of a twist to it, I don't know if it's got romance in it, 
and it doesn't have stars on the cover, but it was set in space. So we're using it for a reimagined classic. And then the other one that I've had so many good things about that I really want to try and read is The Night Circus. I understand that this is quite an autumnal book, so quite keen to read it this time of year. You can see my edition has stars on the cover there. This is actually a really tattered edition I got for 50p in a charity shop. So if I enjoy it, I might treat myself to a nicer copy because I think someone dropped it in in some water because it was very soggy and it's made the lovely sprayed edges leak slightly. I gather this plot is quite twisty as well, quite turny. Again, I don't know if it's got romance in it, but it works with stars on the cover anyway. <laughs> And it's just trying to find sort of extra books to to bulk out that readathon a little bit. So I don't really know that much about it apart from it's about a circus that's quite mysterious. So, but I've heard really good things. So that is quite a lot of books that I'm mostly intending to read, not just in November, but by the end of the year. But some of them I will be getting to in November. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them, or if you're taking part in any of the read-alongs or read-a-thons. Have a chat to me down in the comments about any of that. And please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And you can also follow me on my social media. That information is always listed in the description box below. But that's it for today. So thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.